Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today we're just going to briefly talk about percent as a conversion factor. So lots of times you'll see percent in a problem that you're solving, and this can throw some students for a loop because they're not really sure how to incorporate that into a typical conversion problem. So we're going to talk about what percent means and then use it in a practice problem. So first of all, let's just think about what percent means. One measure of how lean someone is, is their percent body fat. So if you're an athlete, a trained athlete, you might be 9% body fat by mass. What that means is out of every 100 pounds that you weigh, 9 of those pounds are fat. So that would be a super lean person. But the point here is, is 9% means 9 per 100. So we can really think about what percent is saying as being 9 per 100. And once I write it as 9 per 100, you can start to see how that looks like a conversion factor, right? If I say 15 miles per hour, we know that can convert between miles and hour. If I say 9 per 100, that can convert between things too. But what does it convert between? Well, this is percent body fat by mass. So the 9 is very specifically referring to fat. So it's 9 fat for every 100 body mass. Now it looks a little weird not to have units on that, like you might want nine grams fat for every 100 grams of body mass, but the reason I'm leaving, leaving the units off is because whatever the units are, they're actually gonna be the same for the nine and the 100. So in the example I gave, if you weigh 100 pounds and you're 9% body fat, you have nine pounds of fat. But the same would be true whether we do that in grams or kilograms or whatever. So it's almost easiest just to leave the unit off and just say 9 fat in whatever unit of mass per every 100 units of body mass. And now we can use that as a problem. Now you might see this in terms of body fat or you could see it in other chemistry problems as percent sodium, which is a chemical element. Or you might see it as 30.2% copper by mass. And all of these can become conversion factors. So we already said this is like writing 9 fat is equal to 100 body mass. And then I could write that as a conversion factor with 9.0 fat over 100 body mass. And I could do the same thing here with my sodium by mass. So this is saying per total mass, 12% of it's sodium. So I could say 12% sodium over every 100 total mass. Or I could, for this example with copper, by the way, Na means sodium. I know that looks a little weird but Na is sodium, so that's why I put the Na there. You could put 30.2 copper, which turns out to be Cu, for every 100 total. Now, importantly, all of these are by mass. So before you could use these conversion factors, you have to be in the units of mass. So you couldn't, for example, do it with volume when it's percent by mass. However, if it's percent by volume, which is something that comes up sometimes, then you could do it with volume units. Okay, so our percent can be seen as a conversion factor here. Let's use that in a problem. This problem says a person weighing 150 pounds is 9% by mass fat. How many kilograms of body fat does the person have? Okay, so the first step here is to write our percent as an equality. We have 9%, and so we're going to write 9.0 fat is equal to 100, because percent means per 100 body fat. I'm sorry. Uh, body mass. Notice we're given the total body mass right here at 150 pounds. So the next step after we write the percentages of quality is to identify the starting quantity. That's 150 pounds. And we specifically know that's percent pounds of body mass. That's how much the whole, whole person weighs, which is going to be important when we use our percent as a conversion factor. And eventually we want to get to kilograms, which is kg. All right, let's go ahead and work that out. Well, we're in body mass total, so that means what we could cancel out on the bottom would be body mass, and up top we could go to fat. The nine would go with the fat, and the 100 would go with the body mass. So notice that gets rid of body mass, and so we're not actually changing the units. We're still in pounds, but now we're in pounds of fat. So if I think about what unit I have after I multiply by nine over 100, I have pounds fat. And it asks for kilograms, so I need to get rid of pounds now and go to kilograms of body fat to finish the problem. So we are given this equality down here, 2.2 pounds equals 1 kilogram, and I'm in pounds now, so that means pounds should go in the bottom, and that means that kilograms should go up top. 
So the kilograms is going to go with one and the pounds is going to go with two. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to do 150 times nine divided by 100 and then divided by 2.2. And we can see that that person would have 6.136 kilograms of body fat. Now, how many sig figs should I round to? Well, this 150 has just two sig figs, the one and the five. And that means I should round this to two sig figs, which would round to 6.1 kilograms of fat. So notice we started with total body mass, 150 pounds, and we ended up with just fat. The key conversion there to go between pounds of body mass and pounds of fat was our percent. So that's the way in which percent can actually be used as a conversion factor.